Genesis 15. This is our lectionary passage for today, and I'm excited about it. Genesis 15, verse 1 and 4, we taking it back, talking about um, a guy we can learn a lot from. <laughs> we can learn a lot from this guy, so let's just look at it. I'm um, in Genesis 15, chapter 1. Are y'all ready? Um, it says, I'm reading from the uh, English Standard Version. It says, after these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Hallelujah. How many need new visions? You need God to give you a new vision. God, I need something new, not something old. Something. He appeared to him in a vision. And this is what he said. Fear not, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O oh Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, Behold, you have given me no offspring, and a member of my household, uh, a member and a member of my household will be my heir. It's like, oh well, I guess just how we gonna do it. But verse four says, And behold, the word of the Lord came to him: This man shall not be your heir; your very own son shall be your heir. And he brought him outside and said, Look, look towards heaven. And number the stars, if you're able to number them. Anybody ever go camping and you can see the stars? You ever try to count them? It's impossible. Then he said to him, so shall your offspring be. And he, Abram, believed the Lord, and he counted it to him as righteousness. Somebody said he believed the Lord. And he was counted as righteousness. Today we're going to talk from a subject from, um, that we're going to just dwell on for a little bit. Surviving seasons of delay. Surviving seasons of delay. Have you ever thought that you was going to die in a season of delay? Did you ever think you was going to give up? Do you think you wasn't going to make it through a season of delay? Well, this time we're going to talk about how to survive those seasons because you know I don't know about y'all I'm not, I'm not very good with delays how are you with delays maybe y'all more saved than me I, I'm I'm not so good with delays we could be in this is a safe space can I be we could be honest um how y'all doing with long lines y'all do it no are y'all one of the people who are, what is the bread there's a bread place people be in line for the bread ain't that much bread in the world I I can't do it. I personally can't do it. I'm not going to be in no line around the corner for some bread. Maybe y'all do. Man, I'm sorry. Let me not yuck your yum. That's what you do. But if it's a, like a new restaurant or something and everybody lined up, I'm not, I don't want that no more. I got a taste for something else. At this point, McDonald's will do because I'm not, I'm not, I can't, I'm not able to do it. Maybe it's my older age. I can't do the long lines. Traffic. When I'm on a time schedule and delays construction ahead, Lord, I don't know who, who, who has the time? I don't know. Not me. I want to be a better person. I want to be able just to sit in it and be like, oh, just put on a podcast. No problem. Or, you know, I'm fine with it. Um, yeah. Uber Eats, they taking too long. We be checking, tracking them. We wondering, irritated. Where they at? We're tracking. Your Uber Lyft take too long. You see them just going in circles. We get mad. Anybody fly? We get flight delays. If you go, as soon as you go to your gate, you see that delayed. What's your first reaction? Oh, Lord, here we go. Right? I don't know, but I may not see. I feel better. I'm not alone. I don't do too well with delays. So it makes sense that it doesn't really translate into my spiritual life because when God puts me on pause, or puts me on a delay, it kind of messes with me. Anybody else? Have you ever been through a season of delay? Have you ever been on pause? Have you ever felt forgotten by God? Have you ever felt like, uh, what are we doing here, God? Where's the holdup? What, 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 what are we, this, just, if you just tell me where the holdup is, I'd be fine. Just, I just need answers. The silence is that's what's killing me. I don't know what's happening. Seasons of delay. And this is where we find our boy Abraham. His name was Abram at this time. God had not changed it yet. But this is where we find him in this passage, Genesis 15. Our boy is in, he's in a pickle. Abraham is in a pickle. 
He don't got, he, he's stuck between a rock and a hard place. He in a, he in a situation. Cause, because it had already been 10 years, 10 years ago from this passage, God appeared to him and said, I am going to bless you. I'm going to make you a nation. I'm going to make you great. He like, cool, 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 cool. He's like 75 years old. You know, at their, their timelines was a little different. He was still pretty young at 75. He's like, cool, all right, good. Bet, got it. Yes, me, God. They, did, he, did he ask for this blessing? Did he beg God for this blessing? No, God appeared to him and said, hey, you, my guy, I'm going to bless you. Yeah, I'm going to hook you up. Yep, you, yep, you're going to be a great nation. He's like, okay, cool, cool, cool. I'm going to be a great nation. And verse 6 even tells us that he believed God. He believed God, but this was the problem, the execution of it, the execution of the promise. God made a promise. He like, cool, and now, I'm, I'm, but how, God, how? How are we going to do this? How is this? You're telling me I'm going to be a great nation, that's going to come out of me, but my wife is barren. His wife, Sarai, was barren. She could not have kids. They were already 75. They was all like, you know, we already cool where we are at life. We done accepted that that's what, who we are, and we just going like taking the servants. That's why he was asking, um, is Eliezer my lead servant? Maybe I could just, you know, do adoption through him, right? That's what he was thinking. And he said, no, 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 no. We get caught up in the minutia. God, how will you do it? Anybody got a promise from God? Anybody waiting on something? Yeah. But it's like, but how? But God, you want me to start a business, but where the money coming from? You want me to, I, I feel like I want a house, but where the down payment coming from? God, oh, I, want a, I want a job, and I, I feel like this is my career, but how am I going to pay this tuition? How am I going to get the, like, this the things. We have these dreams. Anybody got dreams? Am I in the right place? You got dreams. You got visions. But it's the how, how do I get to it is the part. It's the minutia. We, if we want all the when, where, why, how, who, we want all that. Yeah. Because we kind of live in this microwave generation. We, you know, I think all the Uber Eats and all that, they got us a little spoiled. The microwaves. When we, I, who remember when it wasn't microwaves? We got to be old. Yeah, that's me. We, we in a whole different category. Remember when it wasn't no microwave? Yeah, we had to warm everything up in the oven. But see, since we had the microwave, we kind of take on this, took on this microwave mentality. I need it now. I need answers now. Google messed us up. I, got, I need an answer. Psst, no problem. We used to have to use encyclopedias. Y'all re- Anybody had the full set? I'm giving my age away. The full set. You want an answer? Go look up, pay in the G. G. <laughs> go, to, <laughs> go through it. There it is. No, there ain't no way it don't exist. It, there's no answer. Now we got Google. You can find information like this. So it's so interesting to me that in the midst of this, that God would appear 10 years later to Abram and gives him an answer that I didn't expect. You see, I'm a little anxious. You see, I'm trying to figure out things. Okay, you think God would be like, cool, don't rock. You know what? It's going to happen. Just hold on. It's going to be on this day and then here and then that. And bam, it's going to happen. That's not what God did. So let's look at the three things that God told him that's going to help us get through seasons of delay. Anybody need help? in your season. I need help. I'm waiting on God. I'm waiting on promises. I'm like, where they at though? I don't see them. Where they, what, who's that? That lady? That's what, that's me. Um, first thing that God told Abram, we are still in uh, Genesis 15:1. It's all in Genesis 51. First thing he tells Abram is fear not. This is powerful to me. It says, fear not, Abram. Come on, put your name in there. Say, fear not, and then say your name. Ready? Fear not, Tanisha. Say it again. Fear not. That's what God told. He's like, first thing, first thing, first, chill. Calm down. You're worried. You're all flustered. First thing first, just just stop. You know, you know there's so, that's like a theme. If you were to read through the Bible, a constant thing is fear not. If some of them are shady, like a big angel would appear, and they'd be like, hey, fear not. I'd be like, bruh, you an angel. Like, how am I not supposed to be scared? But all the way, someone's counted it. It wasn't me, so I can't verify that. 
that it is 365 times that the phrase fear not appears in a Bible, which equates that there is one for every day of the year for us. Fear not. First thing he said to him. And what, what, what was Abraham scared of? Did it say it was somebody was coming to beat him up? Someone was coming. What was he scared of in this moment? In verse 2, it says, what will you give me? For I continue to go childless. I hear what you're saying, but what will you give me? Anybody felt like that? God, what will you give me? I got all these desires in my heart. What will you give me? Man, I want to, I want to do this and that. I want to be married. I want to have kids. I want to go to school. I want to start this business. I want to, I want, what will you give me? That was his fear. Well, how will I have an offspring? How will I be a great nation? I don't even have a kid. Like, how does this work? I'm older. Like, come on. Biological clock is tick. It's already topped. It's not even ticking. It's already topped. What we going to do? And if we are honest, we have the same fears. God, what will you give me? Because, and in, in just to be keep it really super real, our fear... And y'all back me up. Tell me if this is a safe space. Our fear is that God is a liar. We won't, we won't say that. Of course, we're too spiritual for that. But deep down in our hearts, God's, God's not telling the truth. Huh? God's playing with my emotions. That's why I remember the widow lady. She was like, don't, don't get me excited about a kid. Because, you know, I, I, I wouldn't even bother you. Don't get me none, like, come on. Sometimes God will just appear to you and just tell you things that you didn't even ask for. And you're like, God, are you playing with my emotions? Why would you give me this desire? You don't give me no way to figure it out. You didn't give me a scheme. You didn't give me an agenda. You didn't give me a timeline. And um, we also think that maybe God is playing this cruel trick on us. And uh, we're going to be the, the butt of the joke. It's going to be at our expense. Anybody have felt like y'all, y'all leaving me all by myself? Thank you. i got a few in the audience. Sometimes that's how we feel deep down inside. This is the main one. I've been hurt before and disappointed before, and I'm not going to be hurt and disappointed again. I'd rather build a wall up in my heart. I'd rather be skeptical. I'd rather be like, I doubt it. I'd rather be a Debbie Downer than to really believe in my heart that something great could happen for me. Because I've been hurt. I've been disappointed too many times because fear can both harass you it could paralyze you. Fear could keep you up at night. Am I in the right place? This is all the things that fear will do. But I have a question for you. What's the opposite of fear? Come on, English majors. What's the opposite of fear? Hmm? Courage. What else? Some more. It's more. It's the source. It's lots of words. Mm. Say it again. Come on, English teacher, Miss B. Yes. Yes, calm, peace. What did it say? Fearless. These are all the opposite. So when God says fear not, God is speaking, telling us we should be the opposite of that. We should have courage. We can have fearless. Why can we be this way? Why can we be this? Because we are believing in the promise that God has. And what if I told you that where you are right now, is on the perfect timeline of heaven. Would you believe me? I want you to look at your life. Would you believe me if I told you that right now, your life is on the perfect timeline of heaven? Your life is perfectly timed out. Your life has already been walked out. And even though you think you're not on track, what if I were to tell you you are right where God wants you? Would you believe me if I told you that? That's a hard one. That's a hard one. What if I told you you was right where God wanted you to be, right at this exact moment? All right, all right. We got some faith rising in the room. Second thing God told him, surprised me. This is not the answer I expect God to give an anxious person who was like, what's going on? Second thing, first thing he said, don't fear. Second thing he said, I am your shield. Come on, let's just sit in that for a minute. I am your shield. Like, this is what we're doing. We're just coming up with analogies right now. God, this is so amazing. God told this man, don't be scared, because guess what? I'm your shield. 
I'm your shield. It's a, you know what a shield is, right? It's a defensive weapon. A weapon. Defense wins games, all right? Defensive weapons. God done, God's like, I'm not even your, your spear. I'm not your sword. God God's, has done that in this particular setting. He's like, guess what? I'll be your shield. And in ancient times, shields were very large. They're like your whole you know, size of a person. They were used to hide behind during an attack. And usually from arrows or spears that were being thrown by an enemy. So you could just stand behind that thing and everything would just, nothing would touch you, right? And then they also had a thing called a buckler. You ever read that and be like, okay, what's a buckler? A buckler was a small shield that fit on the wrist or the forearm. You could just, you know, like Wonder Woman, like, mm, 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 like the little two, boom. The soldiers would use it in hand-to-hand -hand combat. So this changes everything. I want y'all to sit in this with me. Psalms 91, verse 3 says, God will cover you with his pinions. Under the shadow of his wing, you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. Come on here. God is a shield? Are y'all a shield? This is what you're going to be to me, God? In, um, in Psalms 3 and 3, it says, But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory and the lifter of my head. See, when's the last time you pray for God to be a shield? That don't make it in my regular prayer routine. I don't remember saying, God, just be a shield to me. But how many know how important it is for God to actually shield you, to be a shield? But you are the shield for me. You're my glory. You're the lifter of my head. Why do we need God to be a shield? Because the Hebrew word of this means that um, it's a protection. So what was he protecting Abram from? What was he saying? Abram, I want to protect you from doubts and fears, the arrows that the enemy will come to throw at your mind and at your heart. I'm going to protect you from trying to figure it out. I want to protect you from trying to play God. Let God be a shield. It's a whole revelation. I don't know. I, I would, if I could, I would run a lap, but I'm not going to do that because the cameras can't follow me. I don't want to do that. The mic said that part. <laughs> Psalms 28, 7. Yo, do y'all feel me on the shield? Psalms 28 and 7 says, the Lord is my strength and my shield. In him, my heart trusts and I am helped. My heart exalts in my song. I will give thanks to him. When was the last time you let God be a shield? God, do it. Be a shield for me. Not just that he will shield you. God is actually the shield. Come on here. God's not just sending his services. God is the service. God, be a shield. Come on, somebody say that. Lord, be a shield. Lord, be a shield. Lord, be a shield. I need you to shield my heart. I need you to shield my mind. I need you to protect me from the arrows of the enemy, trying to mess with my mind, trying to mess with my emotions, trying to mess with my sanity, trying to make me doubt you. God, be a shield. Yes, God, do it in our hearts. The third thing, I wasn't expecting the shield. I, I got the fear not. This is the third thing God said to him, and then we're going to be gone. He said, your reward will be very great. Now, that might not have meant much to Abram. I'm, you know, I'm tell you why. In verse, uh, chapter 13, verse 2, it already established that Abram was already rich. It says, Genesis 13, 2, write it down if you want to watch, look at it later. Now, Abram was very rich in livestock, in silver, and in gold. Abram was balling. He, knew he was cool. He was good. He was rich. He would have been on like the rich and famous of the Palestinians. I don't know. He would have been on something. He was really set in life. So God comes and says, I will be your reward. I'll make you great. That might not have meant much to him because in chapter 14, he had just won. I want you to read, read this on your own. Look at chapter 14. He had just won a battle. In chapter 14, yeah, y'all didn't know Abraham was out here battling folks. And right, he, was, he just won a battle, and he, came, he defeated four kings and got all the spoils that came with it. After that victory, he obtained the four kings, all the spoils, and all he could have been like, I'm just going to kick back right here. 
I'm just going to be, I'm just good. I'm good. I'm just sit on what I got. I'm, it is what it is. I didn't have a kid. It's good. This is as good as it gets. That's what he could have said. And then here comes God to tell him, I got better things for you. I got more. There's more for you. You thought you was cool where you thought you was just going to plateau right there. No, 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 no. I got more for you. It's like that commercial, but wait, there's more. I feel that that's what God is saying to some of us in our lives. But wait, there's more. A lot of us have just accepted this is just the way it is. This is just life. I'm just going to do this every day, and this is just it. God is saying there is more. Do you believe it? God has more for you. Remember, Abraham didn't ask for none of this. God came to him and said, there's more. There's an anointing of more. I have more for you. Your reward will be great. Some translations, I love this. Uh, one translation says, uh, don't be afraid, Ab Abram. I'm your shield, and I'm your exceedingly great reward. This is what God is saying. I am your reward. I, come on, can you get this in your mind? Don't be scared. I'm your shield, and I'm your reward. Maybe, just maybe, if Abraham would have grabbed the concept of God being the reward, maybe so much drama wouldn't happen in his life. I don't know if y'all have read about the story of Abraham. It's a whole Maury Povich show. I am the father, all that. It was, it was a whole thing. God says, I am the reward. I'm the prize. Come on, if you don't get nothing else, please get this. I'm the prize. I'm the goal. I'm the goal. So I'm promising you all this stuff, and it's going to be cool. But at the end of the day, it's me. I'm your reward. Do you get that? I'm, I'm, the, I'm your exceedingly great reward. Everything else is just an accessory to who I am. You get that? I, 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 am I not enough, Abraham? Am I, am I, am I, am I, we just did Jira. Y'all sung a beautiful song. I'm more than enough. I'm everything you need. I'm the main thing. Abraham, I'm the main thing. So you know what this, help, what this helps us with? Perhaps that was the point of it all. Just perhaps, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not a professional theologian or nothing, but perhaps this was the whole point. Y'all thinking with me? This helps us to live with an open hand with God. God, if you do it, I'm fine. If you don't do it, I'm fine too because I have you. You're the reward. You're my portion. You're the thing. You're the thing. It's not the stuff. It's not the accolades. It's not, thank you for the promise. Thank you for the desires. Thank you for the visions and all the things. But even if I never get it, God, you'll be enough. You'll be enough. You are more to me than the, Jesus is all the world to me. That's what the old folks used to say. Hallelujah. Amen. God, you're more than enough. So, as we close, Abraham is typically called the father of faith. We've sung many songs about him in Vacation Bible School. And um, only the old saints know about that. I ain't going to go there because it's a long song. Um, but he's the father of faith. But the only thing that kept him tripped up the whole time. Read the, the story of Abraham. The only thing that tripped him up is that he was always trying to help God. He was always trying to help God. That's what happened with Hagar, the side chick. The incident that happened with Abraham is that they sat around another 25 years was going by. They're like, look, check it out. God ain't, I don't know what God doing, but you know, we could just, we gonna just make this happen. Right? And even after he had Ishmael, God was like, yeah, that ain't it. I, you know, and it was a bunch of drama. Poor little um, Egyptian sister had to run and be on the run and had to raise this, this little black boy on her, on her own. It was a whole lot that happened because Abraham couldn't leave it alone. Couldn't let God just do what God want to do. Just let, take your hands off of it. Somebody say, God don't need no help. God don't need no help. Tell yourself, God don't need no help. That's not good grammar or English, but it's okay. Say, God don't need no help. 
He don't need help. And I know sometimes we want to live in the both end. That's how Abraham, verse 6 said he believed God. It said it. Read it for yourself. Didn't it say? It be- he, I believe you, God, and it was counted as righteousness. And then we move a couple of chapters down, and he's like, hmm, did God really say? Did it, what, how is it going to do? And what, we, how, what are we going to do? Right? And I love this, though, because this shows his humanness that he was human. I'm so glad that Abraham just wasn't like the superhero in the faith that we really couldn't relate to. They'd be like, oh, he did it, cool, all right, good for him. No, he messed up a lot, even when he believed. This gives us good news. Hey, stop being so hard on yourself. God knows our humanness. God knows our frame. God knows that we are doing stuff and we try to believe and sometimes we forget and we forget promises and we should have known better and why I didn't do better. Do you know God's already accounted for that? God's already accounted for it. We live in a both end. He believed God, but when delays come, he tried to help God out. When there is a, a delay, we try to fix things. Take your hands off of it. Tell yourself, take your hands off of it. It's above me now. It's above me now. I can't do nothing else. I love it. God gave us a promise, but sometimes we have doubts and fears. God, God, God went through extremes. Please go back and read the whole book of, 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 uh, of the story of Abraham. God went through extremes. He told him multiple times, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless you. You're going to be a hair. I'm going to give you offspring. He would do demonstration. Y'all saw the stars? And then he would do the sand. Look at the sand. Look at the star. He did a covenant. He made covenants with him. Read it. He made animal covenants. He walked through a whole, it's a whole situation. God became a torch and a light. You got to see it for yourself. God went through extremes. God even said, look, I'm going to swear on me. He said, on me, I'm, I'm telling y'all, don't, he said, I'm swearing to me. Look, Hebrews 6 says, when God made a promise to Abraham, since he had no one greater by whom to swear by, he swore by himself. He said, surely I will bless you and multiply you. He said, I'll put it on me. I swear to me. He didn't say, I swear to God. He said, I swear to me. There was nobody else greater that I can swear by. It's on me. I'll put it on me. This is what God is saying to you. It's on me. I promise I will do this for you. I promise I will be here for you. Even if it don't pan out the way you think it's looking like, I promise it's on me. He couldn't have did, he couldn't have did more. He, couldn't have did, he went out his way to show Abraham, I got you. And we are just like Abraham. We miss it sometime. Anybody missed it? And anybody had to do consequences because you missed it? Hagar and uh, Ishmael was a consequence. I, you know, you got to just take them consequences sometimes. Be like, yep, I, yep, that was on me. I took an L on that. But God does this amazing thing in the spirit where he will cause things to work together for your good. So the timeline is, and I'm closing, God first gave him the promise when he was 75 years old. Isaac was born, the promise, when he was 100 that was 25 years of waiting. 25 years of waiting. When you was already old, he was already old, past biological clocks, clock was smashed and broken. It was nothing else he can do. It says, but he finally got the promise 25 years later. So God did this amazing thing. God waited until it was humanly impossible. Just so that he can get all the glory, Sister Sheila. So that he can, he waited past time. He waited till it was biologically impossible. There's no way for you and Sarah. Just so I can get, it reminds me of Lazarus. Lazarus already dead, been dead, dead four days. Oh, now let's go see Lazarus. What? He already did. He's stinking at this point. God, take heart. Sometimes God will wait. God will do things in your life just so nobody else can get the credit but him. You can't say you did it. You can't say it was your favor. You can't say it was your connections. You can't say it was your strength. You can't. God will put you in a corner, back you in the corner so that you can say it was only God. Only God could have did that. Only God could. Anybody happy about it? Only God could have did it. 
only God could have did. And we may not understand God's timing, but God's timing is always perfect. The old soul said he may not come. Huh? He may not come when you want him. He always on time. That's it. You can take that to the bank. He always on time. And then when look, look, then he finally gets the promise. Yay, we got Isaac. He finally gets the promise. Then what he did? Did he just leave him alone? He's like, no. Now I want, I want, now I want to test you to see how much do you love me or you love him. Who, who you love the most? You love the promise or you love the, the, the giver of the promise? Oh, why don't you go ahead and run me, run me that son. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Why don't you give him back to me? So God is always going to question our motives, even when we get what we wanted. Even when the goal is completed, you got the business, you got the family, you got the job, you got whatever it is. Now God is going to test it. How much do you love it more to me? If I was to take it from you, would you be all right? Am I more than, am I enough? Am I your reward? Am I the goal? Can I be your portion? Then everything else is on top. For our takeaways, I just want you to think about this this week. I always want you to leave with something, not to be like, oh, church was good, but that you leave with something. Oh, all right, I am in the way. Takeaways are, while you're sitting in the tension of delay, don't fear, but let God be your shield. Let God be the goal. This is one I like. Practice believing God. Abraham didn't get it right the first four times, the first five times. The first, every time he was like, I, I believe. No, I don't really. I don't. But he had to practice. Practice makes any athlete knows you got to practice. You got to practice. You got to practice. Practice. Everybody but AI knew that. Um, believing, practice believing in God. Even when you don't know the details and even when it seems impossible, practice believing. Practice saying, I trust God. Practice saying, I don't know what's going on, but God is faithful. Practice saying, God will be my shield. Practice saying, God, you're all I need. Practice saying, you're my reward, instead of complaining, grumbling, and moaning. Help me, Lord. The last thing I'll say is, wait on the Lord. Come on, wait on the Lord. Somebody say, wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage. And he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Amen. Isaiah 40 says, but they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up. Come on, how many ready to mount up? They will mount up on wings like eagle. They will run. How many ready to run and not faint? They will walk and not faint. Come on, they will walk and run and not be weary. They will walk and not faint. Come on, wait on the Lord. Tell somebody, wait on the Lord. Tell somebody next to you, wait on them. Wait on them. Wait on them. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage. He will strengthen your heart. Hallelujah. Come on, let's go ahead and stand. As we close, Isaac was born. The promise came to press. And I love that Isaac's name meant laughter. Um, Sarai, Sarah, had um, laughed when she heard that God was going to give her a child when she was in old age. God was like, oh, okay, I'll give you something. All right. And when he was born, his name meant laughter. And I just feel this so strongly that God's going to do something in our lives. God's going to burst something out of our lives that's going to bring laughter. How many are ready for laughter in your life? How many are ready for joy? God, I believe you're going to burst something that's going to make me laugh. Like this is going to, God's going to do something. We always talk about miracles, signs, and wonders, right? But we do wonders, Shady. We don't ever talk about wonders. It's a wonder. How many believe that God wants to do a wonder in your life? You know what a wonder is? That makes you just sit back and be like, how in the world? Like, uh, what did, how? You just sit up at night like, wow, God, how? How did you do it? Why are you so good? God, are you going to make me? God's going to make, come on, if you believe that God's going to make you laugh in this season, God, you're going to bring joy. It's going to make you be like, I can't believe God did that. It's a wonder. God is birthing Isaacs in us. God wants to birth joy and birth laughter in our hearts. So, God, 
we just want to seal our time, seal our time with your, with a prayer and just say, God, you know our frames. You know our humanness. We thank you that you gave us models like Abraham that show us how to believe. And even when we mess up, even when we doubt, and even when we do things our own way, you still got us. God, you understand us. So, God, let us learn from this, Lord. Let us um, know what it feels like not to walk in fear. Come on, if you're ready to be delivered from fear, won't you just lift your hands? If you're like, I'm scared of, I'm scared of being scared all the time. I don't want to live in fear. God, deliver me from fear. Deliver me from the fear of hurt and rejection and disappointments. God, build up my strength and my faith in you. God, I thank you that you are a shield. If you need God to be a shield, will you just begin to just thank God and just begin to tell God, God, be a shield for me. God, I can't. The thoughts, there's too many. The doubts, the fear is too much. I get overwhelmed with anxiousness or depression. God, will you be a shield? Let me know you as a shield. God, protect me from the lies of the enemy. Protect me from my own hurts and doubts and past traumas. God, be a shield. Oh, God. And lastly, God, will you be our exceedingly great reward? God, it's you. It's you we want. It's you, God. Let you be enough. Reveal yourself in ways that we say, God, you're really all I need. Everything else is a cherry on top, I guess. But it's you, God. It's you that we need. God, do a work in our our hearts. Be a wonder for us. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. We're gonna... Thank you.